get rocking and rolling with our uh, master class for the day. So that'll be good. All right, welcome Vicky, Corey. We got some. We got some. We're gonna have some fun today. This is gonna be good. All right, social media best practices, and we got some some good topics of conversation. But uh, as we begin, Corey, uh, I'm excited because you've been training others and social media been working in social media for years and years and years and really um so excited to work as a team with vicky and others and making sure people are visible and all those good things online but really just online best practices focused in on social media these can these principles can be carried over to other places right yep absolutely awesome yep. we got others joining the live stream as we jump in here. So shall we begin, my friend? Are Let's you ready to rock? It. Let us do it. Come on. I love it. Hey, um, I'm, I'm digging your background too, by the way. Just, Thank just you, really. Uh, I was feeling artsy today. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can tell even by the by the shirt that you shirts that you wear sometimes, right? <laughs> okay. I love the crazy shirts, man, and yeah. uh, bright and vibrant and. All, all that kind of stuff. All yeah. right. Well, everybody, welcome Corey Michael. He's going to be walking us through social media best practices today. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat box, uh, drop them in the comments, and we'll make sure and follow up with you. We're here to to help you, to to train you. Corey uh, will dig in deep with us today. Uh, we're not here to pitch anything particular. I mean, there's some software and different things that we make available, but but we're we're really here to add value and and get some input from Vicki and Debbie and others as we're going through this today, so it'll be fun. Uh, weekly master classes happen every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. If you'd like to know more about that, reach out to Corey. You can take a screenshot of this for topics that we cover. Super excited, even uh, for next week, as we walk through the kind of the inner workings of membership uh, for marketing specialists um, as we dig into that next time we meet got a marketing strategy Corey do we have marketing strategy I mean are, or are we just throwing oh, no. things against so, the wall what's going on <laughs> I heard somebody describe it to me the other day that their marketing strategy is literally like throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks and you know the thing is that's not really a bad idea <laughs> which sounds kind of funny in some ways because marketing is seriously just a series of experiments nothing works forever everything changes always and so uh what you got to do is find the right kind of spaghetti to stick to the wall and then <laughs> right. it works but you got to have a strategy for sure in order to succeed across all of marketing not just social media stuff but across all marketing uh efforts you got to have something in place that's going to guide you because um, otherwise you can get lost in the weeds there's so many voices out there so many gurus right self-proclaimed gurus so many people saying you should do this and this and this uh that it can it can get really noisy so if you have strategy and you stick to it no matter what the economy kind of like with stocks no matter what the economy is doing don't sell until it's right just stick through it it's gonna le level out this is not financial advice this is just more of an observation but with marketing it's the same thing you gotta you gotta stick to your plan and um and things begin to shake out as you go yeah i mean at least in the beginning it's good to experiment and kind of get your bearings and and learn the platforms and different things but at some point you got to know where your target is and where you're yep. going and what you're trying to do and that's what i i love about your way of training is you're able to help so many with just a basic strategy that doesn't take 150 hours at a time right. to implement i mean just you, 149 <laughs> just a, just a few less than that you know maybe maybe 140 minutes but kind of get kind of get it going but but i uh, really appreciate uh, you uh, walking us through not only roadmaps and different things with blueprints but actual social media strategy so as you know uh, the blueprint we, we we all cover the first tuesday of every month so if you'd like more information about branding visibility promotion nurturing we even have our, our special guest vicky a visibility vicky on the training today so she'll she'll probably have some good questions and answers and thoughts around those kind of things 
But uh, Corey, what, why is clarity, creativity, and consistency so so important? Why is this included in our training? Yeah, today? well, let's, let's get right into this then. So um, the framework that we, we just showed you and that most of you on this call and watching are potentially aware of is our is that blueprint and, and the branding aspect um, is is really kind of the linchpin to everything else that you do uh, because you could be advertising you can be getting things out there but if ultimately you don't know who you are or or what your kind of superpower is or um, you are are just trying to figure all of that out it's going to be a lot harder to get those those clients to commit in the long run so uh, a big piece of even what we're talking about today we're going to just briefly just one slide for each piece of that framework talk um because they all undergird what we're talking about here so um tim you can th this is just a list of social media platforms we're going to talk more about this later you can you can move on but the three c's of branding um that that we had up a, a second ago clarity creativity and consistency this is all about <clears throat> refining how you are doing your messaging do you have clarity when you are putting it out there who you are what you do is there a creative nature to it or do you look like everybody else you want to stand out from the crowd and then consistency that rhythm of execution uh i think is the best way to say it where our is it consistently covers a couple different ways. One, do you sound the same across all the platforms? Do you have a consistent voice? But then the second thing is, do you have some kind of consistency in posting, right? So we're talking about social media here specifically today. Are, do you at least post once a month? Is that, your, is that your rhythm of execution? Hopefully it's a little bit more than that. Hopefully it's at least once a week, uh, but having some kind of flow will help you to be persistent, help you build some structure. So these are really three, uh, these three C's are really important to uh, the branding process. Uh, then there's uh, a promotional side, right? So I'll, I wanna just kind of dispel something real quick here is uh, social media in and of itself is not a sales platform. It is a long-term strategy marketing uh, effort and it is for building awareness it is for uh, having conversations with people um, and it is a great place to follow this uh, we call this the ice guideline because we like acronyms here with giver marketing uh, but this is a way to to have these conversations is to inform people again who you are what you do get get your message out there get your products out there but but then you want to have a way to get them to connect with you. That's the call to action. What are they doing or what can they do to learn more about you, to buy your products, to um, be able to speak with somebody, whatever it is, you want to make those things clear and invite people into that conversation with you, which is the engage side of it. That, that's the purpose of social media, ladies and gentlemen. It is called social for a reason. It is to be social. Um, with folks and, and right in line with all of that is when you are now having these conversations with people with your potential customers and clients and even ones that are current clients that are commenting and, and liking and sharing your your posts which we're going to talk more about that later uh, you want to nurture these right you want to have ongoing relationship with these people and so we we have this thing that we call the seven marketing moments it's Nothing magical, nothing fancy. It is just the way that we have found uh, gives us a little structure in remembering how to um, and remembering to follow up with people with, um, as you can read there, introductions, emails, social media messages, giving something of value, inviting people somewhere, personal notes, phone call. We go over this more in depth um, in our blueprint training, but just wanted to give you a snapshot of some ideas on ways you can connect with folks. So. As I said, as mentioned a minute ago, you want to not just do social, you want to actually be social. Businesses think in terms of social media like it's a robot a lot where, okay, I have to do this because it's going to produce this result and beep, boop, beep. That's not how it is. We are human creatures. We are, we are selling to and marketing to human creatures. <laughs> uh, and, and so it's important to remember to to have the conversation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention conversation. I, I challenge somebody, Sabrina, you're on this. See how many times I say conversation today? <laughs> uh, because that's really what it is, folks. That I, that if, if you get nothing else 
from this training today, before we even really get started into this, is if you can somehow generate conversation with people that are following you online, you're going to win. You're going to create relationships. So let's get into it. Identity and messaging is the first piece, the probably one of the most important pieces of a social media strategy. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Tim. So there are three pieces that we're going to talk about here um, in, in figuring out what your identity and your messaging is. So the first probably the most obvious, but maybe not, uh, is to identify your audience, right? Who, who are you trying to talk to? Who are you trying to have that conversation with? I think that's number five, Sabrina. Who are you trying to have that, that, that dialogue with uh, and, and, and be able to engage in, in this dialogue with them? So a couple questions to ask yourself as you're trying to figure this out. Um, and guys, this is going to help you. If you can figure out who you're trying to talk to online, this will help you refine your target audience in every other area of your business because maybe it's been too many people and too many places this is going to help you kind of refine that process so what is your ideal customer's biggest pain point you're trying to solve that's that's the easiest way what pain point are you trying to solve but then also what emotions are you addressing there's a there's something called the demographic and the psychographic demographic is you know uh age uh, ethnicity area that they live in that is a demographic um, and there are use cases for your target audience being a specific demographic but um, what I like to to really highlight is the psychographic which is how is your your ideal customer what are they thinking what are they feeling what what emotions are they expressing publicly online what what is it that they're feeling in their heart that's a problem that you can solve think about those kinds of things so, and then what is it that they ultimately want is it they want uh they want something external or do they want something that's more of an internal uh solution what what is it that they want that you can solve with your particular product and service so for example uh paint okay if you're a painter uh and you provide uh paint that uh helps people um not have to worry about painting their house for 20 plus years okay if that's a particular uh product that you sell that solves a pain point with people that go man i just have really cheap paint and i have to paint every six years that's that is something that they ultimately want is something that lasts longer so think about how that kind of messaging can come through in your social media. Just as a quick little example. Corey, I love the psycho-emotional tendencies of your audience to be considered. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. I think that that's, if you're writing notes, ladies and gentlemen, the psycho-emotional tendencies of your audience. Just yeah. absolutely a nugget. Almost psychographic. And, and I'm going to speak more to that here. Um, in, in the second really big piece of, of your identity and messaging is to become a storyteller and not just a service seller. So this is, um, this is something that uh, I've been actually learning a lot about myself recently and really like diving into being a storyteller. Because if you think about it, um, if you think about all the movies you like, all the, all the books that you like to read, there's a story that hooks you. And, and there is a particular formula that um, is taught out there uh, to writers, to, to screenwriters, um, to, to draw people in. And there's a, a lot of different ways you can do that. I'm just going to highlight three little pieces of it for you today. Um, but the first is, how can you position your business as a guide to your people? A mistake that a lot of people make, a lot of... Uh, businesses make is they try to make themselves and their business the hero that you are coming in to save the day for your clients but really what you want to do is be the guide that shows them how to succeed on their own right teach a man to fish so let's use the painter example again you as a painter selling a product that is a 20 year plus product you are helping your potential customer to, to feel like, hey, I've got this. I can paint. I don't have to have the frustration of painting multiple times a year. This is great. And so you've shown them the way with your particular product. If you think about Star Wars, Yoda is the guide that helps Luke Skywalker 
master all of the problems that he's trying to face, right? We, we have these stories where a guide comes in, shows the way, has the answers, helps the hero, who in this case is actually your customer, to succeed in whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. So uh, maybe if you're a do uh, uh, an animal trainer and you have services to teach people how to train their dogs. So you're not just training the dogs, you're actually teaching people how to train their dogs. You are helping them win. So to, to bring this back around to uh, the social media side of it, what kinds of posts and messaging can you create and, and put out there to position your business as a guide to help people win at whatever it is that they're trying to do in relation to, to your product or service. You can even think of it as who, what's the villain? Is it frustration? And I put what is the villain, not who is the villain, because you don't want to personify somebody. You want to use a, a frustration. Those emotions that we talked about in the psychographic, those are the villains. It's frustration, loneliness, uh, 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 confusion, whatever it may be, those are the, the villains. And then how can you help your hero overcome those, those villains? And then you have these problems, these different kinds of problems, external, internal, philosophical problems that is worth this. That's a whole other hour of conversation, but just to get your mind going, what are problems that you can solve for people, even in your social media posts? You can post educational things. You can post inspirational things, things to take people from point A to point B. And Tim, I know I'm getting really meta here, but I just want to show people the power of story that draws people in. Um, and there's, there's a, a lot that you can do with your messaging. I know there's uh, some folks popping uh, links in the chat box around story brand. and That is exactly where I got this from that I was about to mention is that this is a... Um, so story brand, Donner, Donald Miller. So he's one of my mentors um, and where I've gotten a lot of this from. But um, I love, um, I mean, that's a whole seven part thing that I didn't want to go into. Yeah. I just wanted yeah. to highlight these three areas. But um, story brand, if you're interested more in, in this storyteller, not service seller uh, way of messaging, definitely check out story brand. He's got a podcast. He's got a book. He's got a website. It's, it's pretty awesome. But um, yeah, we can go ahead and go to the next uh, slide here, Tim. Um, the, the third piece is to be human in your messaging. Find your voice. Is it a warm and a casual voice? Is it a professional uh, you only use particular language kind of voice. What What is your voice? Really determine what that is. And honestly, your personality in person is probably a good choice to go with, unless you're abrasive. <laughs> that might not be the best choice to, to have for a, a voice on social media. Um, but you want to make sure that it is unique to you and that you're not trying to be something that you're not. Um, that's very important. Uh, important. Also, avoid insider language. It's really easy for us to get caught up in the language of our industry because we know it so well. But think about the people that you're trying to attract and, and take yourself out of yourself for a minute, put yourself in your potential customer's shoes and go, does, does this sound human <laughs> first? Uh, and, and does this sound like something that I can understand and digest so I know what it is that they're talking about, that I know what it is that they're trying to help me with? Um, because when they can understand it, they can engage with it and they can have that dialogue with you so that you aren't just talking at them, but you're able to have a conversation with them. I love it. And we have some comments in the chat box about around just being yourself and you be you and be your authentic self. And so that's a, that, those are amazing yep. uh, pieces to consider. What's the 80, 20 rule as a, as related to social media, Corey? Yeah, so we're in the content planning and creation section now. So uh, first of all, it's important to note that as you are are developing your uh, your content and your messaging and your identity and you're getting ready to post everything, uh, this 80-20 rule is really important. We've, we've heard it in a lot of different scenarios, um, but the 80-20 rule in, in, in regards to social media uh, is that 80% of what you post, um, you want to go back to that slide, Tim, 80% uh, of what you post on social media should be focusing on engaging your audience asking the questions, giving them value, and again, inviting people into that dialogue or conversation with you, um, where only 20% should be directly promotional, salesy, uh, whatever it is, you know, trying to, to get the sale. Um, 
And, and that, that's something that a lot of people struggle with. They think that social media is where I'm just going to put all my promotion, all my sales, and that's it. Uh, so just this is a better balance of that 80-20. But then you also have to remember, you actually do need to do that 20%. You do need to actually ask for the sale at some point or invite people to learn more about your product and service, either by going to your website, giving you a call, whatever it is. It is okay on social media to post promotional. Just don't overdo it. So both of these have calls to action. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're slightly different in that one is more conversational yep. and the other one is more transactional. Right. Right. Okay. Got it. Yep. Exactly. Oh, I think you went backwards there. So if you've ever wondered, how can I come up with content ideas? I know I need to post. I know I need to, to make these things, but what do I even post about? Well, here's uh, some ways that are less known, but really powerful ways. And I encourage you to take a screenshot or uh, write this down as we're talking. But I, so I just, just for fun, I called it five weird ways to come up with endless content ideas okay and this is really going to help you so the first thing is to uh, actually join facebook groups uh where your ideal customer lives uh so if you are i'm going to use the painter again if you're a painter you want to join diy type facebook groups or homeowners groups or or groups of paint aficionados <laughs> and just to be uh, clear i'm talking paint that's like house painting or or the more construction type painting not uh not just a painter uh like an artist painter that would be a, a different uh demographic and psychographic that we're talking about here um but then inside of facebook groups they have a little search tool where you can actually search for particular phrases keywords different things that will pull up posts that people have made whatever with whatever it is that you're looking for. And so a couple of great um, uh, ways to, to look for particular things is to type in phrases like, how do I, what do I, why is the, anything related to, to something that may, people may be asking regarding your type of product or service, it's a great way to see what actual people are asking. Okay, the second one, this is, a, this is definitely a weird one, is to browse Amazon and YouTube reviews on products that are related to your industry. So a lot of people post reviews, you know, of products um, and video form uh, on, on YouTube or there's just videos and the people in the comments section ask questions. There's responses to those. Um, and then on Amazon in, in different products, people are leaving reviews, right? There's a lot of questions there. You can actually see the kinds of things that people are engaging with and wanting to learn more about. Maybe you do a product highlight um, that, as part of your social media plan uh, and strategy, maybe you highlight certain products or services, but th that's a really great way to know what kinds of things people are asking about in real time uh, related to, to what you're looking, looking at. Posting. Um, you can find books on Amazon as well. This is a fun one. Uh, and use the look inside feature. If you go to a book, you can look inside and you can actually look at the table of contents and see the different uh, topics that these uh, authors are using and you don't want to copy them verbatim <laughs> but you want to use the topics of their different chapters for ideas on okay what are the leaders in the industry talking about that is relevant to the their customers that happen to be maybe some of my re uh, relevant customers as well uh, get ideas from from these books that are out there because they're being published and they're helping people so that's a great place to look <laughs> Uh, browse Quora, Q-U-O-R-A dot um, com. It is a, think of it like a massive question and answer forum that literally covers every topic under the sun. Um, you can go on, search keywords, again, related to your industry, your product, your service, and see what kinds of things people are asking about, kinds of discussion. Um, and then uh, the last thing is answer the public. Uh, which it is, there's no spaces for a reason. Uh, it's answerthepublic.com, uh, which actually let, lets you see real live searches. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this tool a little bit more in depth in a bit here. Um, real live searches that people are using Google for uh, that will give you dozens and dozens and dozens of ideas of things to post about, questions to answer, to topics to think about. And these five things, ladies and gentlemen, and I, I do hope that you took a screenshot here, is all related to finding what real people actually want to know. 
That is the kind of content that we should be posting, not what we think people should know about, because it's not about us. <laughs> we might be totally overlooking what people are actually wondering when it comes to the type of thing that we do, the product or service that we provide. So this is getting real life feedback that is invaluable for, for content ideas. Tim, you have any thoughts on all that? No, I think that some of the, the tools that you've brought to the table over the years, like answer the public and just kind of getting, getting uh, kind of deep within some of these platforms to try to hunt for the right topics is a, is a great idea. I think once you get your top, you know, five or 10, then talk to Corey about a strategy that you could build a whole year's worth of content around just by doing these five things, yep. bringing your list to Corey. And then, then at that point you have a strategy that you don't even have to think about as much, as much on a day-to-day -day basis. You already, already have it planned out. So I yep. love that. Yeah. And just to put a little teeth to this too, this is something that I've done and I've used a lot of these strategies. Um, I came up with 366 days of content ideas. It took me like two hours to do. So you, this is really a streamlining process to help you with that. Um, there's a number of different kinds of posts that you can make, right? We're gonna just briefly cover a few of them uh, and just ideas of uh, categories, I guess you could say. So there's everybody's favorite, humorous memes. <laughs> there are a lot of memes out there. You can either, there's tools that you can create your own. You can find ones just by a quick Google search. Uh, and, and these are ways to just kind of engage the, the funny bone of the people that you are, are, are looking at um, connecting with. There's educational posts, uh, which is, uh, or inspirational posts, where you, everybody has a favorite quote or two, right? Uh, or maybe you have, um, a really popular for a lot of businesses, is to have a motivational Monday, where you are posting uh, quotes, inspiration to uplift the followers that, that you've got um, that are following you. There's the educational. Uh, you can create a little bit lengthier in text uh, educational posts. Um, it's not the ideal, but it is possible to, to open it up a little bit more to some more words, to some more information, to some more pictures uh, in different ways. So in the examples here, you can see, you know, there's some um, uh, life insurance 101. Uh, there's recycling uh, that shows you here's what you actually recycle. Here's the actual categories. Um, and then that last one is uh, about helping uh, kids eat better right and it's used as a bright colorful picture with the face that is really engaging by the way ladies and gentlemen that is the um, most engaging type of photo that you can post on social media is real people again realness genuineness actual people even if it's a stock photo it is showing a face and those get engaged with more than um, any other kind of uh, post do uh, so educational is a great way to inform your audience of things. One of the things that I've been thinking about, Corey, is the fact that the statistics are showing that anything living, so a human, an animal, even uh, like plants and, you know, like she, she's holding some vegetables there. <laughs> anything living is going to catch your eye as a human. And some say that that's part of the lizard brain or how we're wired or whatever, yeah. like doesn't doesn't really matter to me as much of the science of it necessarily is the fact sure. that if I'm going to be picking out of two or three pictures, I probably really want to have a human element and an animal or a yeah. living something living in it because my eyes are going to catch that. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yep, absolutely. Yep. And that even gets extended into the video realm, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. Um, another type of uh, a post that you can make is uh, user generated content. So, um, or UGC, this is basically where uh, you are reposting uh, posts, whether it's on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. Uh, you're reposting people that are tagging you or, or commenting or posting a picture that has your, your product in it. So Starbucks is a great example, right? They, people post their, their, uh, <laughs> their pumpkin spice lattes, uh, while they're sitting outside or whatever. And, and Starbucks will, will be tagged in that post and Starbucks will repost those sometimes. And, uh, other, other companies do the same kind of thing and they want to show 
real humans using their product or engaging with their service. That's a great way to, uh, to post something that isn't just your voice, um, which is really important, but to actually post what others are saying about you um, and, and, and tagging you in. That's a really powerful way. Because then if they tag you and you tag them, then all their friends are seeing it. And so it, it kind of extends the message even more. Uh, personal, this is another one. It is okay to be a little personal with your business posts. Again, people connect to people, not to machines or business or social media giants. That is, it is to people. So you as the business owner, it is okay to say, hey, happy birthday to this team member. We really appreciate them. Or, uh, or Merry Christmas or, or Happy Holidays from from my family to yours and show a picture of your family and, and, and you know, with your kids and your, your husband or your wife, whoever it is, uh, it's okay to have that personal element. In fact, is, not only is it okay, it is highly encouraged because people want to know kind of the behind the scenes, pull back the curtain a little bit, make, you, make your business more relatable to, to folks. If people can connect with you on that personal level, um, People, you can build loyalty a lot easier and people will actually choose you, uh, even if you're more expensive, over other companies if they feel like they have a personal connection to you. So it's okay to get, get a little personal. Follower fan acquisition. This is a question that we get asked about a lot and I'm gonna make this really short and simple. Uh, because that's one, all we have time for today. <laughs> uh, but two, because it is, um, there's a number of different ways out there. We just want to offer a couple of ideas to you. Okay. So, uh, the follower and fan, uh, acquisition, the fact is it is better to have 500 actively engaged followers. Let's say you only had 500 followers on Instagram for the rest of your life and that's it. <laughs> it is better to have 500 actively engaged followers than 10,000 followers who don't know who you are, what you do, or even care. 10,000 people, the numbers don't mean that you're gonna get more sales. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have more engagement. Volume-wise, kind of per capita, it does increase the chances by having more people. But the, the key is to cultivate the relationships and cultivate the kinds of posts uh, that are relating with people uh, to, to build these actively engaged followers, to take them kind of from cold to casual to active to super fans. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the plot line of, of taking your, your customers and clients down a journey. So, so just remember that as you are growing your social media platforms, work on engagement and conversion, not just numbers. And so let's talk about engagement. So um, the, one of the ways that, well, actually I think this is before engagement. Um, one of the ways that uh, you can grow your, um, we're gonna talk about Facebook here for just a second. It's very easy. Uh, biz, Facebook is, is one of the most natural places for people to go first with their business, to create a Facebook page. Um, and the easiest growth strategy to, to pretty easily get a, a few hundred followers out of it um, is to invite your friends, your family, and your fans to like the business page and to follow it. So you can send a personal message to folks, um, you know, your family, hey, just started this business page, here's the link, would you mind liking it? right? You can send that to your, your family, friends, and, and fans that you have maybe on an email list. Uh, but then you can take that a, a step further and you can ask them to share your page uh, with all of their friends as well to, to go and, and like it. And so this is a really easy way to just begin to see the numbers go up, which accomplishes two things. One, you're, getting num you're starting to get um, some numbers that you can actually post things to and people will actually see, um, at, at least begin that process. But the second is when you start to see a little bit of momentum, it will give you more confidence that what you're doing is, is worth it. Uh, the key is going to be the ongoing piece though. Like you can post uh, once or twice and then be done and that's not really great but if you can have that rhythm of execution that we talked about earlier um, then that is what's gonna give you that 
that consistent engagement with folks and then you can um, have that whole nurturing process but this is just a really simple one two three easy way to be in growing your Facebook page um, there are similar strategies for Instagram and uh, Twitter that we don't have time to go into um, LinkedIn Tim has a whole training on on growing connections on LinkedIn that's amazing um, that's in a couple of weeks I here. love how simple this is though Corey I mean it yeah. can be applied to multiple platforms and if if you're getting overwhelmed, you have if you maybe you have an intern or somebody helping you out, uh, th this would be a good consistent approach, foundational approach to kind yep. of get moving, right? Yep, absolutely. So, um, so the question is, when it, in regards to engagement, is how do businesses actually make money then from social media? The short answer. <laughs> well, I mean, do I have the answer on the next slide? I can't remember. Oh yeah, I do. Okay. The short answer is engaging content and engaged business owners. Uh, so what does that mean? <laughs> it means you're not going to make money right away. <laughs> Sorry, just to give it to you real. The, the idea here is that you are posting content that people actually care about, that is actually helpful to people, that is actually addressing pain points for free. You are giving away information for free to draw people into this conversation with you because if they can trust you and it being helped by you on a free level that they are they are learning and they are growing and they're applying then they are engaging with the content in a different part of their brain where they're actually doing something with it that they are trusting you now where it's going to be a lot easier to make the sale to them further down the line uh, but then the second piece of this is not just in posting the engaging content it's actually the in you as a business owner being engaged with interacting so it's not a i'm going to post this and i'm done hands off you actually got to do something you got to facilitate you got to uh you got to be actively involved in the process of 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 that engagement if you want to go to the next slide tim uh, i have the uh some of what ways to to engage your followers uh, folks go ahead and take a screenshot of this as well but here's here's some really easy ways for you to engage your followers and fans to continue the conversation or generate it maybe for the first time one is please respond to every comment it's really easy it doesn't take long to do there is no reason why you wouldn't need to respond to a comment but here's the thing both positive and negative comments you should respond to it actually says a lot more about your business when you ignore uh, negative reviews or negative comments uh, because uh, it, it shows that either one you don't care or two you are afraid of conflict um, when really you have an opportunity to show all the people that are following you following this post you're showing them how you as a professional business owner handle yourself uh, accordingly in, in, in tough situations and good situations um, you want to comment on others posts as your business profile um, you can text or, or send video thank yous to your new followers. Um, there are tools out there, like one called Bonjoro, uh, that will let you send short video messages to people. You can get a notification uh, when somebody follows you on, uh, on, on, on Instagram or um, sends you a message on Facebook Messenger uh, for you, where you can send them a, a personalized video reply. Cool, cool thing that you can do. You can ask more about that later. Um, video thank yous to your most active followers. Ask your happy customers for reviews and recommendations, whether that's on Google or Facebook or, uh, or a recommendation or endorsement on LinkedIn. Um, ask people for that. Um, you can start a referral program, which 10% of your marketing budget should be to reward those that are referring people to you. That's a way to engage with them. A loyalty program for repeat customers and clients, right? That's a really easy one to do when you're a food establishment or a coffee shop um, is, is that loyalty. Um, you can also optimize your Facebook Messenger to engage uh, with new visitors and followers automatically so they can go onto the page. If they're going to ask a question like, what are your hours? What, are you, what is your location? You can actually have Messenger, Facebook Messenger respond to them automatically um, so that way you don't have this pressure of having to answer every single one of those. You can pre-fill uh, it with some common uh, answers to common questions. So um, those are just some ways to engage uh, your your folks that are, are following you um, and now we want to tell you about a couple of tools and I know we're going fast here um, so feel free to um, drop those questions in the comments um, and we're gonna we're gonna go through um, 
uh, them in a little bit, but um, some, some tools, right? So social media platforms, there's a bajillion out there <laughs> and there are more coming. Um, the, the key though is to start with two and dominate those. Don't worry about trying to be on every single platform because you're going to stress yourself out. Start with the two in particular that you are the most comfortable with. Whatever it is that you naturally gravitate towards, whether that's Facebook and TikTok or YouTube and Nextdoor or Quora and Twitter, whatever it is, start with the two that you're the most comfortable with and, and just nail it with the content that you're producing there uh, because that is going to help you get your feet wet. It's going to help you develop that clarity, that creativity, that, that consistency, and then begin adding as it makes sense to do so. So, so um, I'd love to hear what some of your, uh, your favorite platforms are in the, in the chat box. Um, if you want to go ahead and drop those in there, let me know what you are on. I'll tell you what I'm on personally. Um, I love using Facebook and Instagram, um, and I use LinkedIn occasionally as well. Um, well, more than occasionally, but Facebook and Instagram is where I, I live a lot. Um, and, and Facebook Messenger. Facebook and Messenger are kind of tied together. Um, that's where I'm at. Where are you at, Tim, mostly on, on social media platforms? LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Is where it's like your second home. Yeah, your- LinkedIn and Facebook for sure. Um, I'm actually starting to get more intrigued with TikTok recently yeah. and yeah. just learning more. Uh, next door for to help local businesses, I like to stay active and just kind of spread the love there locally for yeah. lo- local companies. But LinkedIn, Facebook um, are, are, are my happy places for sure. Yep. Awesome. So um, answer the public. This is the tool that I mentioned earlier that uh, will give you, and I I really call it the best kept secret for coming up with topics for marketing uh, because you can type in, you know, whatever your keyword is. And remember uh, when I was talking about the Facebook groups and you search for phrases like, how do I, what do I, which is the why, right? This will will give you all those kinds of questions that people are asking um, as Google searches uh, um, related to your keyword. And so it's a really, really great way to get dozens and dozens and dozens. I mean, I'm literally folks, I'm talking 60 to 75 easily minimum every keyword that you type in uh, to come up with topic ideas of things to address. Really powerful tool. It is free. This please use this. <laughs> this is going to take your content to the next level because it's going to be relevant to what people in real time via Google are searching for related to what it is that you are offering. And this doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a bill, multi-billion dollar industries. It could be a niche within a niche uh, for your particular industry, right, Corey? The more niche you are, the better this tool is for you, actually. Okay. Yeah, because... Uh, you know, okay, so financial, right? If you typed in financial as a keyword, there are so many <laughs> things out there, but maybe maybe you are a specific industry. So uh, Primerica, for example, or Thrive-In, something like that. You could type those in as keywords and see what people are asking about those. Um, oh, or, I or see. It so be- it could be really any topic and then just the conversations and the questions around those. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yep, yep. Um, Canva, this is an awesome tool that is an online graphic design creator editor you can download it as an app on your phone you can do it on the computer it is a free one as well a free tool uh, that lets you uh, use templates that they provide hundreds of templates if not thousands uh, to create eye-catching visual colorful impactful uh, graphics for um, events that you're doing or uh, quotes that you want to post or in, in, infographics, uh, just anything that, that is graphic related to help supplement your, your posts. This is a, a great tool to use. There are paid upgrade options as well if you want to start using them for uh, printing out like as flyers or posters or whatever it may be. But the free version will be more than enough for your social media needs. Um, the and integration actually, and the development of Canva right now is pretty insane. So say that again? The integration and the ongoing development of Canva uh, is, is starting to get... 
yeah. changing, adapting, adding. There are tools out there. We're going to talk about one in a second um, that integrate Canva directly into it. That's pretty cool. So um, Crowdfire, this is a social media scheduler. So if you're listening to all of this and you're like, gosh, I do not know how the heck I'm going to remember to post <laughs> something regularly or know what to post. Well, Crowdfire is going to be a great way to get your feet wet with that because it will schedule out posts for you 10 posts at a time uh for in the free version that will let you post to facebook instagram linkedin youtube and a couple other tool uh social media platforms out there that you can literally put, have a post all at the same time at a time of your choosing um and so this is a great way to kind of get ahead of the curve and get ahead of the game you know a, a few, few days and uh and be able to get content scheduled to reduce that pressure off of you and folks this will literally save you hours during the week um if you begin to use a tool like crowdfire there's a number of them out there hoots Sweet buffer, this one called Social B. Uh, there, there's a number of them out there that are really great tools, uh, but this is definitely something you want to look into uh, to begin this process of, of scheduling things out. Um, the second tool that is a social media scheduler is called Cloud, Cloud Campaign, and this is what we're, um, what I use in my personal business. What we're getting ready to integrate into everything with Giver Marketing. Uh, Cloud Campaign is when you're ready to take your social media strategy to the next level and get real serious. Even if you're just a solopreneur, you're just a one-man show, one one-woman show. If you are ready to say, I want to make this thing happen uh this will let you um it actually has canva built into it uh that will let you create posts and you can create content you can auto schedule so you can you can create the content and drag it onto a calendar like you see here and it will auto schedule it to a time on a day of your choosing to a time uh when people are interacting with your social media pages the most so this this browse this analyzes Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google My Business, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. You can post to all of these. Uh, and it will analyze when your followers and fans are actually engaging with you, whether that's 2 a.m. in the morning or 6 p.m. in the evening, whatever it is, it can actually auto schedule based on when people are interacting. Wait a with minute. You. you just said Google My Business. You, ha you had me at Google My Business because there's, yeah, there's not a lot of these schedulers that'll do that right yeah yeah and that's that's a, an important one v vicky who's on the call today visibility vicky we call her she is the the google guru uh and and she's always encouraging people to uh to to make sure that their google my business profiles are up to date and it even exists because hello they're free um and there's a number of things that you can do with those uh, and, and posting to them, this is something that I actually didn't even know about until I met Vicki a little over a year ago, uh, on, on that you can actually post to them uh, like you would other social media platforms that are really valuable for SEO purposes. Um, you get engagements on them and everything too a little bit. Um, Vicki, I'm just going to keep talking here <laughs> uh, just because of interest in time. Otherwise, I would have had you talk a little bit. No worries. Time. Um, but anyways, uh, so cloud campaign, if you're if you want to take your social media strategy to the next level, scheduling things out, it is, it, there is a cost associated with it, which we can talk more about that you can, um, get through us directly. But anyways, uh, another tool is hashtagify. A lot of people ask about the importance and use case of hashtags. Hashtags are basically keywords, uh, that people search for on social media channels, uh, in particular, uh, uh, Instagram and Twitter is where those are really effective on Facebook. They're more of just eye candy, I, I guess you could say, um, or, or they're not really used for much on, on for search purposes on, on Facebook. But on Instagram and Twitter, uh, people actually search for uh, services and products using hashtags. So it's important to use ones that are relevant to people being able to find you. Um, branded hashtags, things that you know have your business, those are good to tag your posts so that you can go back and look at them later or somebody could click on it and see all of your posts that are using that branded hashtags. But just remember, people are not gonna search for your branded hashtags because they don't know what they are. You wanna use a tool like Hashtagify to help you find relevant keyword hashtags to your industry or your service um, that is really helpful to put on those posts. Um, people ask me, you know, what's a good amount to use? Um, I, there, everything I've heard, uh, it's always changing. Right now, I would say that um, five hashtags on Instagram is a good place 
uh, to, to live with, with five, three to five. But then the other side of it um, is actually 30, which sounds crazy. Uh, but I've been uh, following some, uh, some Instagram uh, people that have a lot of followers. And that's one of the things that they're talking about right now. So hashtagify will, will help you with that immensely. Um, and this is, a, this is a little bonus that we've got for you today that um, is basically a 10 tips to refresh your social media profiles list. Um, and there's 10 things that you can do. We're going into the summer now that uh, at the time of this recording that you can uh, update everything you've got to make sure it is relevant to what you're trying to do, relevant to your messaging, to, to your brand. Um, as, a, as a bonus, now you can take a screenshot of this or if you send me uh, an email, and I'll pop it into the chat right now, um, Corey M at givermarketing.com, uh, we have a, a, a checkable interactive PDF version of this. That, um, that we can send to you via email that I'm happy to send to you where uh, there you can have it and then as you go through, you can actually check it off, kind of a cool little thing. This is a little bonus for y'all for watching with us today um, to say thank you to, to help you get your, your profiles consistent um, and, and just help you take your social media game to the next level here as we enter the summer. Tim, why don't you talk about this referral ping pong here as we wrap up today. Well, you, you talked about referrals being a, you know, a good portion of your uh, marketing uh, budget as far as your resources. And we, we've been experimenting with something and we're actually building out some uh, domains and some different things around referral ping pong. It's an extraordinarily simple but powerful way to get you business in, like right away, like very quickly. And the way it works is it's basically exchanging referrals with your power partners, your associates, uh, your team members in a way that gives a kind of a quid pro quo or a reciprocation uh, for every referral you send, you ask them to give you a referral within three days so that you can play referral ping pong and the game continues until somebody doesn't come up with a referral or they drop the ball, if you will. And so we're, we're finding this to be extremely simple, very powerful. I must have received maybe 20 referrals in the last 20 days based on this game, just with a few, a handful of people. So it's, it's very powerful. It's something we're going to be implementing more and um, reciprocation is the name of the game in business. Uh, look, if you're if if it's a one-way street, then it's not a a power partnership. That's that's uh, either you're taking advantage of somebody or you're giving without any kind of reciprocation. So we want to build out this kind of uh, give, receive, give, receive, give, receive kind of rhythm, and we find that referral ping pong or introduction ping pong uh, is another way to consider it as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that's been, Corey, you and I have been doing this for years and years and years and years just, just because of our friendship. But if you can build in this with, it, with your power partnerships, yep. oh, that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, you want to go back to that, uh, that slide real quick, Tim, uh, the one uh, with my link on it. Um, sure. so, so, um, if you need more help with this guys, I'd love to schedule a call with you, uh, just to chat for 15 minutes to see if there's any way I can just provide a little bit of value to you as you navigate through this. And we can always set up something for longer. Uh, we, we, um, but the main thing that we want to do is just be able to just add value to, to you guys. So I'm going to pop this link into, uh, the chat box right now. Feel free to, to schedule something with me. Um, as you can tell, I'm sure, this is something that I am passionate about. I love helping people tell their story um, and, and have clear messaging and reach and connect with people. Um, so please uh, feel free to, to uh, set something up with me. Just pop it into the chat box. Um, and now if you've got any questions, um, we've got some time here. Wow, we've got actually six minutes today uh, to go through some things, Tim. Uh, I love so it. We could go to some. I saw one that um, Debbie was asking. Um, sorry, you're not feeling well today, Debbie. By the way, I saw that comment. Um, it says, uh, "How does how can you set up uh, something to auto send when they like your page? Can it say thanks for the follow and then a question to engage them?" So, uh, to clarify this a little bit, 
Um, so Facebook Messenger um, will only do that if somebody uh, goes to send you a message, um, not if they like the page. That used to be an option, but it's not anymore. So they actually have to actively uh, click send message and then you can have something that sends to them automatically. Uh, Twitter does this though. They, when you follow somebody, at least last I checked, Twitter um, will can, can send a, an automated message to somebody. Instagram can as well. Um, that is using a variety of uh, programs out there via some things like Zapier and some uh, other programs. Uh, we, can, we can talk more about that, but it is possible uh, to send some things automatically to folks. Um, and you can also, um, with Facebook Messenger, if somebody does send you a message, you can get this notification and this thing Bonjoro that I told you about to send them a, a video as a response. So, um, so there are some limitations here and there, but there are a lot of ways to um, add some automation, which, gosh, guys, I could have talked for another hour and a half on automation alone, um, especially in relation to social media. But um, Debbie, I, I can help you out with some of that um, personally. Um, we, can, we can connect on that. Um, Tim says, Corey, I saw on your site a chat bot. What is that? Yeah. Um, so there's a, a, a bot that I have used um, called uh, Landbot. That is what I actually have used to, um, instead of a form, to collect information from people. Uh, you can use a bot uh, to collect information, uh, engages with people, makes it look like it's typing. Um, it's just a more interactive way to, to collect information from people, but then I had it have this whole system, I'm getting super nerdy here, <laughs> uh, this whole system for once it collected information, it would ask questions based on the type of information that they gave to me, and then eventually it would put it into my CRM, so that way I had record of the kinds of people uh, that are uh, uh, engaging with me on this bot. Um, it's super helpful for uh, some lead generation type stuff. Um, so landbot.io, I believe is the, let me see here. Um, it's super easy to build. Um, that you can, yeah, landbot.io um, is a great place if you're interested in adding bots. Um, it'll integrate Facebook Messenger and some other things too. So, uh, yes, thank you, Tim. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions? Vicky's talking about some visibility stuff that she helped About Town Deb with. Awesome. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself and uh, have some dialogue. We still got a little bit of time here if anybody wants to. Else we As everybody's unmuting themselves uh, to ask their questions and all lining up to 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 make their comments and different things, uh, I will say that Landbot.io looks pretty looks pretty legit. A uh, hundred chats a month for free is that true, Corey? Yep. Yep. I like it, and it integrates with Zapier, and obviously you can you can do some uh, some other things with it too. But boy, those those are some game-changing game uh, ways of using basic uh, artificial intelligence uh, on your websites, right? Yep, yep. Good, good, good. Um, I thought I heard some, Debbie, was it you that was about to say something? Yeah, yes. Um, first of all, I just really, I just want to thank, thank you. This was so informational and I, I, I mean, I wish I, I wish you could see my smile but my smile is kind of an ouch smile right now. But um, seriously, lots of good information. And, um, and thank you to Vicki. I mean, I just feel that the whole, the whole visibility is so darn important. And I think, I don't think, I know that is a tool that'll be easy to recommend to people because so many of your clients don't even know about it. So number one, there's a good value when you play ping pong or whatever that was. And also with, with all of you, like with Corey, the in, that, I mean, you just gave us golden nuggets today and Tim does too. And so anyway, I just wanted to really just say thank you. I really, it's awesome. so incredible. So just thank you. That's yeah, all. Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate that. We, we love doing this. this. is why we do it every week and, and just try to help as many people as possible. Yeah. So that's awesome. And Vicki's a great team member and, and helping us with a lot of the visibility, getting your business seen online, whether people are looking for you or not. <laughs> you want to be seen even when people are not looking that's for right. you. Right, Vicki? Yes. And you mentioned Google My Business. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so that much. Is, 
Very yeah, important. Absolutely. If you need help with your Google My Business, uh, definitely talk to Vicki. She actually put her um, uh, her email into the chat box there. Okay, um, let's. We got time for one more question. If anybody has anything, I just wanted to say um, you guys are fantastic on lead generation. I think that my big question, and I'm sure we could do a whole uh, talk on how to qualify the quality of the lead because with this with the bots you know people you know i set up uh the, uh, the calendar thing on my website and there's yeah. this kind of hidden fear of just people setting up all these appointments and they want to talk but i have no idea who they are so yeah so you we you me and tim have an appointment on friday and we'll we'll talk about this but just as a a little helpful hint for everybody else too those pre-qualification that you're talking about, you can have those as questions on your Calendly appointments um, that you can ask as many questions as you want, probably no more than three, um, but you can ask those pre-qualifying questions before people even have the opportunity to speak with you so that you can save time, energy, resource uh, before you even have those conversations. Um, so that way you can keep it to a 15 minute discovery call, know exactly what you're gonna talk about, talk about you know anything else you want to, but that's a really great way to, um, Calendly is that first line of defense for you. So um, we'll talk more about that on Friday, but just wanted to give that uh, the little um, tidbit to everybody on here today. So anyways, everybody, thank you so much for being on this, uh, this uh, masterclass today. Really appreciate it. Um, without you, we wouldn't have this going on. So we appreciate you telling people about it. And if you found this helpful, we did post it on uh, Facebook on the, Tim, did you post it to your page or to the giver marketing page? Uh, you can find uh, the link to these master classes on all pages mentioned. Uh, I'm sure it's on Corey's page as well. So next Tuesday, we'll be talking about um, some different specific things having to do with marketing specialists. And I know that uh, many uh, 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 of us here are marketing specialists and uh, want to learn a little bit more about how we do what we do as a team, collaboration, uh, more referral ping pong conversation, a lot of fun doing that. And then the first Tuesday of every month, we go through that blueprint. So grab your spot, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, can, I can definitely post it uh, again if you just ask me, and I'll make sure and get it over to you. But, but uh, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you have access to these master classes because it's, it's our way of showcasing uh, our giver approach, our, uh, our talents, our expertise, and, and really – showcase the fact that we're not here pitching anything particular except for how to add value and we're, we're trying to practice what we preach <laughs> yep. and so we're having fun doing it yeah awesome great, great job today well, Corey. virtual virtual clap great job thank you sir very nice all right y'all we'll have a great rest of your what is today tuesday i've lost track of the days already for whatever reason have a great rest of your tuesday it's called a baby. and we yeah it's because i have a, a, a almost nine month old baby that's that's why so <laughs> all right goodbye everybody bye god bless you guys god bless you bye bye bye